When one thinks of early aviation, the Wright brothers' flight in 1903 usually comes to mind. There was, however, another aviator about to take off. William Cornelius Robinson, nicknamed Billy, was born in 1884 and grew up in the small, isolated community of Grinnell, Iowa. While growing up, Billy Robinson worked in a bike shop. Because of financial problems, he was forced to drop out of high school to continue supporting his family after his father and two brothers passed away. Robinson had a genius-like aptitude for fixing all things mechanical from a very early age. The people of Grinnell originally thought Robinson was a little strange, but they grew to recognize and appreciate his abilities. At a young age, he designed and built many ingenious machines out of scraps from the shop. In 1910, at the age of 26, Robinson built his first monoplane, the very first aeroplane in the entire state of Iowa. As a part of this plane, Robinson created an air-cooled, 60-horsepower radial engine. Every aspect of the engine was extremely innovative. Robinson learned to fly from Max Lilly, a very well-known aviator at the time, earning his pilot's license in August of 1912. He then went to Cicero, Illinois with Lilly, where he worked as a mechanic and teacher at Lilly's flying school. While at Cicero Flying School, Robinson made many impressive flights and soon became widely recognized for his knowledge, remarkable piloting and mechanical skills, and commitment to the advancement of aviation. In 1913, Robinson decided to establish his own company and flying school so that he could advocate for well-trained pilots, better landing fields, and safer aeroplanes. His chosen location for the school was Kansas City. On his way there, he decided to take a stop in his hometown of Grinnell to rest and get more gas. There he was met by old friends and many Grinnell businessmen who were fascinated by his plane. After learning of his plan to go to Kansas City, they persuaded him to stay and set up shop in Grinnell. The townspeople were very supportive and purchased stock liberally, allowing Robinson to establish the Grinnell Aeroplane Company and a pilot training school, stimulating a turning point in Grinnell's history. Through Robinson, the Grinnell Aeroplane Company designed and built many innovative airplanes and had a huge impact on the aviation industry. All of the Grinnell Aeroplane Company's products were designed and built entirely by the company, something that was only done by two other companies in the nation, the Wright Brothers Aeroplane Company and the Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company. Robinson and the Grinnell Aeroplane Company became nationally known as more feats were achieved. Crowds began to gather around Robinson and his plane everywhere he went. Robinson's flying school taught many people to fly, including many officers of the United States National Guard. As the only teacher at the flying school, Robinson was a diligent worker and always showed great enthusiasm for his work. He was the brains and drive behind the entire company and flying school. Robinson continued to gain recognition from the top researchers and inventors. He became an active member of Thomas Edison's American Society of Aeronautical Engineers. One flight that was especially notable was a flight from Des Moines, Iowa to Kentland, Indiana. During this flight, Robinson broke several records and brought wide acclaim to himself and the small town of Grinnell. He also became the second person to carry airmail in the United States, a service that wasn't officially started until nearly 10 years later. These accomplishments, and the ones that followed, earned Robinson the nickname Birdman of the Prairie. But the Birdman also had to face many challenges. The Grinnell Aeroplane Company was supported by stockholders, so money was always tight. The fluctuation in funds made it difficult to continue production. Robinson also faced adversity when the Wright brothers ordered Grinnell Aeroplane Company to cease production under allegations of patent infringements in an effort to eliminate competition. Knowing he hadn't done anything wrong, Robinson hired a patent attorney and continued building his unique, one-of-a-kind designs. As the town of Grinnell gained more national and international attention, it was quickly developing into the aviation center of the nation. The company's planes were being tested by the military branches of several different governments wanting to use the planes in World War I. The British Intelligence Service believed that Robinson and the Grinnell Aeroplane Company were far more advanced than any others in the country, including the Wright and Curtis companies. The company made a contract bid with the United States government to supply over 100 aeroplanes for use in World War I. On March 9, 1916, 
Robinson signed a contract for his planes to be sold to England and France for the war. Two days after this agreement was made, Robinson attempted to break the altitude record in an effort to gain more publicity, thinking that would help to solve the company's financial issues. The entire town of Grinnell, including his wife and three children, was watching. The spectators quickly realized that something was wrong. Robinson had somehow lost control of his plane and was plummeting towards the earth. When someone finally reached the site of the crash, the plane was burning with Robinson's body inside. Everyone who knew Robinson was shocked by his death. A local newspaper printed an obituary that read, More than anyone can say, Grinnell mourned the staring aviator. The whole town knew him and was proud of him. The event of Billy Robinson's death was a second turning point for the town of Grinnell, but this time it was not for the better. Grinnell had lost its motivation and leadership. The tragic turn of events caused decreased faith in the company, and as a result, less stock was purchased, injuring the company financially. Two professional aviators, Alexander C. Beach and Otto W. Tim, moved to Grinnell in an effort to replace Robinson. They tried as best they knew how, but they didn't have the same enthusiasm, love for flying, creativity, or mechanical genius that Robinson had possessed. The Grinnell Aeroplane Company was no longer able to meet the high demand for its planes and was forced to abandon the contract in Europe. The plans with the U.S. government also fell through. The Grinnell Aeroplane Company and the Pilot Training School were forced to shut down soon after Robinson's death. A journal published by the Iowa State Historical Society in the 1930s stated, If Robinson had lived a year or two longer, Grinnell, with the advantage of an established airplane factory and flying school, might have been selected as the site of a military aviation training camp during World War I. And with such prestige, the aviation center of the nation might have developed there. Billy Robinson's death was a distinct loss to Grinnell and Iowa. Because Billy Robinson's life was cut short, he was unable to continue leading Grinnell on its path to success. He was, however, able to have a lasting impact through the work he had accomplished prior to his death. Robinson's engine was extremely innovative. Because it was air-cooled, it was lighter and harder to bring down in warfare. It also required less maintenance than most radial engines. Robinson placed his engine at the front of the aeroplane because it was easier to tell when problems occurred during flight and it provided more protection during crashes. The crankshaft was not in a fixed position, which reduced the amount of hot oil being thrown at the pilot and passengers. It also decreased vibration, solved lubrication problems, and eliminated problems with fuel and oil distribution. Robinson's engine was better than any engine in America, and was even better than the highly regarded French model. According to the National Air and Space Museum, Robinson's engine clearly paved the way for the modern radial engine and is deserving of great credit. This engine also facilitated the acceptance, further development, and use of this type of power plant in later years. His passion for the advancement of aviation may have, in part, led to his demise. He chose to focus on building safer aeroplanes, training better pilots, and having better landing fields, rather than securing patents for his own notoriety. Robinson did take the time to secure one patent before his death. It was for a landing chassis that absorbed the shock from landing, making it smoother and safer. The future of aviation was always in mind as he was designing aeroplanes, making innovations well before their time because he foresaw the need for them. Robinson struggled against poverty, adversity, discouragement, and criticism in order to influence and continually advance the field of aviation. In spite of the limitations he experienced during his lifetime, his legacy as the Birdman of the Prairie can be an inspiration even today. The turning points involved in his personal story show that one man's genius and drive can change the course of history.